Hi friends, in this tutorial series, we'll be implementing examples using Spring Boot 3 and Swagger. In previous tutorial, we looked at what is OpenAPI specification and why do we need it. And also we implemented Swagger configuration for a Spring Boot 3 application. In this tutorial, we'll be implementing Swagger configuration for a Spring Boot 3 basic authentication example. For this, I'll be taking reference of my website javainews.com. So go to Spring, Spring Boot 3. In Spring Boot 3, go to Spring Boot 3 Swagger examples. The example that we'll be looking at today is Spring Boot 3 Basic Authentication Swagger example. So in a previous tutorial, we looked at the basics of Open API and implemented Swagger for Spring Boot 3 MySQL JPA CRUD application. So you can go to the example here. So in this tutorial, we had looked at what is the Open API specification and why do we need it. And also we had implemented Swagger 3 configuration for a Spring Boot 3 application. You can go through this YouTube video to understand this tutorial better. So in another previous tutorial, we had implemented Basic Authentication for a Spring Boot 3 application. So if we go to this tutorial here, so previously we had a Spring Boot 3 application which performed CRUD operation on the MySQL database. For doing so, we had exposed some REST APIs using which the user he could perform these CRUD operations. In this tutorial, we had implemented basic authentication. So the user, if now he wants to access the REST endpoints, he would first need to enter the credentials as basic authentication is implemented. And only if these credentials are correct, then the user he will get access to these REST endpoints. To better understand this tutorial, you can go through the YouTube video. In this tutorial, we'll be adding Swagger configuration for this Spring Boot 3 basic authentication example. So below I have given the source code. So download the source code from here. This is a Maven project imported in Eclipse. I have imported the downloaded project in Eclipse. Let us build this project. Run as Maven install. So this will download all the dependencies that we have specified in the pom.xml. This Spring Boot 3 project it performs CRUD operation using the MySQL database. So I'll be starting the MySQL database using the MySQL command line tool. Let us now start the Spring Boot application. So run this as Java application. So here the application it has started on port 8080. Let us now try to fetch the list of employees from the MySQL database. So previously we had exposed a REST endpoints with the URL slash employees which gets us the list of employees. So now if we are trying to access the slash employees URL, it is asking for credentials as we have implemented basic authentication. So the username is Java in use and the password is also Java in use. Click on sign in. So here we get the list of employees. Let us begin with the Swagger implementation for the Spring Boot 3 basic authentication example. We'll first need to add the Swagger open API dependency in our pom.xml. So copy this. Go to Eclipse, pom.xml and add this dependency. Open the Spring Boot project and print this pom.xml. Let us now start the Spring Boot application again. Run as Java application. So here the application it has started on port 8080. If you now try to access the Swagger UI using this URL localhost 8080 Swagger UI index.html. So here it is not allowing us to access the Swagger UI and it is asking for credentials as we have implemented basic authentication. This is not the expected behavior. So what we'll be doing is we'll be whitelisting the Swagger URL using Spring Security configuration. So here these are some of the Swagger URLs that will be whitelisted. Go to Eclipse. Go to the Spring Security configuration that we are defined below. So all these URLs, they will be whitelisted. So one of this URL is Swagger UI wildcard. So our Swagger UI index.html will also get whitelisted because of this. So in the Spring Security configuration, when creating the security filter chain bean, we'll be whitelisting all the strings that we have defined in this whitelist URL. So here we are permitting all these URLs. So copy this change. Here in Eclipse, I'll be adding this. So all these URLs that we have defined in this whitelist URL, they are permitted. Any other request, it will be authenticated. So stop the application and start it again. So the application it has started here. Let us now again try accessing this URL. So now we are able to access this Swagger UI correctly. Let us now try to get the list of employees using the slash employees URL. So we'll be trying to do this using Swagger UI. Click on execute here. So if you now try to get the list of employees using the Swagger UI, it is still asking for the basic auth credentials. Again, this is not the expected behavior. Next, we'll be creating a configuration class named Swagger config. And for this, we make use of the configuration annotation. In this class, we create a bean of type open API. And when creating this open API bean, we specify a few properties like what should be the title of the Swagger UI. So it should be Java in use authentication service. Also using the components method, we specify the HTTP security scheme for the security configuration. And here we specify this as basic, it means that we are using basic authentication for this application using Swagger configuration. So let us create this Swagger configuration class. We are in the config package, we will be creating this. Copy the contents of this class. We'll start the Spring Boot application again. 
where the application it has started successfully. If you now refresh this by the UI, so here we are getting the title as Java News Authentication Service. Also, if you now look at each of these APIs, here we have this lock symbol which is currently unlocked. That is, no credentials are provided for these URLs or endpoints. So if we now click on Try It Out, Execute, it will still ask for the credentials. So here we can provide the credentials for each of these URLs by clicking on this lock symbol. And here we need to provide the credentials for the basic authentication or else there is a single authorized button if we enter the credentials here then it will get applied to all the urls that are present here so click on this authorize and here i will be adding the credentials password is also java in this click on authorize close so if you'll see now the lock symbol it has got locked it means that the credentials have been provided you can also unlock this by clicking on this and log out so for this particular URL, the credentials, they will not be there. Similarly, if you have to remove all the credentials there, in this authorize button at the top, we'll have to click on this logout. Let us now try if this is working properly. So slash employees, click on execute. So now it is not asking for credentials and we are getting the response correctly. So here the basic authentication using Swagger UI, it is working properly. Hope you have understood this tutorial where we added Swagger configuration for a Spring Boot 3 basic authentication example. In the next tutorial, we'll be adding Swagger configuration for Spring Boot 3 JWT authentication example. For this tutorial, you can download the source code from here. Thank you.